Now, a billion dollars to train talented young people around the world, giving them a chance to find solutions to the world's most urgent challenges. That's the vision set out by the former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, and his partner, Wendy. They've launched a new program called Rise, specifically targeting 15 to 17-year-olds around the world to help them become the next generation of leaders. Well, I'll be speaking to both of them live here on the program in just a moment. First, though, let's get a flavour of this project. education to every child present in this world, irrespective of the background they come from, the gender they have, the race they have. I really want to address the problem of climate change because it's so important to my generation. One fourth of the population, so 15 million people, don't have access to the internet. And by preventing residents from reliably accessing government relief programs and online schooling. As someone who has experienced homelessness myself, I know its devastating impact. And while it is an overwhelming issue, I have learned the importance of starting small in order to work towards creating a solution. Let's talk to the powerhouses behind this initiative. Uh, welcome here to the program. Wendy, I'll start with you first of all. This is quite some initiative. Tell me a little more about what it is you're trying to achieve. This is a very ambitious uh, initiative. Thank you for having Eric and me on the program. Uh, if you look at the conflicts in the world today and the challenges that are facing us all, we recognize they don't belong to one place or one country. And the future is going to require leadership from around the world in the service of humanity more than anything. There are so many talented young people between the ages of 15 and 17 who don't have access to the excellent programs that there exist today around the world for universities, for secondary schools. We would like to tap those people and find them wherever they are and take advantage of their enthusiasm, their creativity, the fact they don't know they can't fail and bring them into a system of guidance, support and a focus on public service for their lifetime. Uh, I'll ask you how you do all of that in a moment, but Eric, let me bring you in. Is this open to anyone and, and how will you actually decide? Well, yes, it is open to everyone and we want it to be open to everyone. And what we want people to do is to refer people to us. We know that there's an enormous amount of talent that's undiscovered. And if you think about the problems in the world going forward, we're gonna need these leaders in 10, 20 years to solve them. The world's gonna get more complicated. So what we're doing initially is a digital tool and a series of tests that sort of serve to aptitude and then it's followed with a partnership with Rhodes, which will then be human interviews. It's the only way we know how to scale this. And in terms of some of the things you're looking for, I read in your press release is empathy, integrity. How do you go about trying to ascertain, make a judgment on all of that, Wendy? The uh, applicants to the RISE program will be presenting us with their own video materials. So there will be a way to assess a person uh, face to face. Uh, also, the uh, applicants are recommended not only by teachers, but also by peers. So we recognize that talent may take different forms in different places and different societies. It's culturally relevant. And we're gonna spend a lot of time in the first few years of RISE listening and learning and, and overcoming uh, unconscious biases and, and reaching a new kind of model that includes everyone. If we end up with a room full of math geniuses at the end of our, our period of doing this, um, we won't have succeeded. Erica, twin thought for you, why specifically 15 to 17 year olds? Because there are millions uh, of youngsters out there who perhaps develop uh, a little later on. And uh, are you going to avoid being swayed by current issues like COVID or climate? Or, or do you want to actually be steered to current issues? Well, hopefully the, the way we test for capability is in, independent of today's issues. Uh, the website is called riseforTheWorld.org, and you can actually apply right there. And our theory is that this is something which which Wendy and I will do for decades, right? So we'll follow the development of these people and see what actually works. No one's ever done this at scale, and uh, certainly with my background at Google, I understand how to test things and I understand how to deal with scale. So we've built a model that we think will produce over time the best 16-year-olds. Now, why 16? There's lots of evidence, some of it anecdotal, some of it scientific, that you can spot talent by 16 and the kind of talent we care about, the persistence, the sort of grit, the creativity, 
that's off the charts that produces these extraordinary leaders in different fields, we think we can identify at 16. And Wendy, have already you seen people that jump out to you? And tell me a little more about the support you're offering, because it's lifelong support. It's technology, it's, it's financial support into projects, initiatives that they develop. It, it is astonishing. I think it comes with a, a billion dollar price tag, doesn't it? It comes with a lot of unknowns. As we said, it's an ambitious program. But the reality is, if you can get a young person into university, into postgraduate education, if that's the right course, uh, after that, what happens to them? We would like to think that in that track, there would be perhaps project support for those talented individuals down the road. For someone with a special skill or craft, perhaps there would be an apprenticeship, perhaps there would be opportunities that would come into this network. If you can imagine 100 students year after year after year, you have a community after a while, a community of practice, a community dedicated to public service across the world and to solving these difficult problems that we all share. Well, it's, it's a fascinating initiative. I think you're going to pick winners in July 21, so perhaps you'll come back okay. around that stage and tell us who you've actually picked out from around the world, all these applicants that you hope will come forward. Eric, whilst we've got you there on the programme, though, sure. let me just ask you a few questions around big tech, around Google, about Joe Biden. And let me start with Google, first of all, because the Justice Department has called Google a monopoly gatekeeper for the internet, alleging the company had used a web of exclusionary deals to stymie competitors in the search business. Are they right? Should Google, should Alphabet be worried by the antitrust measures that are in place? Well, I'm no longer at Google, but I can assure you that those charges are not correct. Um, if people are upset about big tech, the best thing to do is to put in some regulations for the things that you don't like, and democracies can certainly do that. Authoritarian countries are already doing it. Uh, antitrust strikes me as a very, very blunt hammer on this issue. And yet we've seen Google lose cases in the EU. They were fined, what was it, $8.2 billion. They lost three antitrust cases there. So, so presumably there, there is scope for the argument of perhaps breaking up some of these big yeah. tech companies. So, so the charges, so the laws in the EU, because I worked very hard on this over a decade um, and spent a lot of time in Brussels, are quite different than they are in the United States. So as a technical matter, the charges in the U.S. are different and they're concerned about the Apple deal for some reason. Um, in general, if you'd like to change the behavior of big tech, your best strategy is to write laws that change or regulate their behavior. They are all subject to the law. And I'd like to be the first person and perhaps the only person to say, I'm really happy during the pandemic that big tech exists, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and so forth. How would the pandemic be without the internet? It would be really rough. I suppose uh, uh, that is the plus side. We all know about the, the negative side, the fake news. And you have talked about social networks, the need for reform. You said it's amplified idiots and crazy people, not what it was originally intended. So you clearly think there is a need for reform. But how? Have you got any sort of idea of how you reform the social network well, sites? So my, my career has been around ranking. And part of the problem with the social networks is they don't distinguish between some idiot who has a computer that tweets out every hour, 24 hours a day, and some very thoughtful person who has an opposing view. The system is organized around outrage in the sense that the things that are most outrageous that so forth get more retweeted, they get more circulated, they get more shared. And so that's where the conflict is. I'm a strong believer that you can take all this information and you can use ranking algorithms by the way, Google is full of misinformation. You yep. just don't see it on the first page. Really briefly, are some of the problems we're seeing in the US now with people simply refusing to recognize an election result, is it manifestation of uh, the element of what has gone wrong? The core problem in the United States is that the media industry and all of the incentives are to push everyone apart. And so saying crazy things such as the president is currently saying causes him to make more revenue. It's a bad model. A final thought, because uh, you've been supportive of Joe Biden. There's uh, a report speculation of perhaps you heading up a task force into big tech. Is that somewhere uh, you'd like to go? Is that something you'd say yes to? So, so Wendy and I have been very large supporters of Biden and the, and the Democratic campaign for the reasons that are all obvious to you all. And uh, we'll see what happens. We're clearly going to be working with this new administration to address 
COVID, climate change, and so forth. I don't know about our roles yet. Eric, we've run out of time, so uh, apologies for that. Uh, Eric, thanks to you. Wendy, thanks to you for joining us here on BBC World News. Perhaps you'll come back and talk about the results of that initiative in July of next year. I'm